Yes, as all of you heard, my name is um, Alex Ramsayer. I'm a, a, s a small startup with four consultants. I started um, one and a half years ago with FutureBuild, and uh, my background is a, a Bachelor of Economics um, at the University of Fribourg in the French part of Switzerland. And um, after that, I went to, into different positions uh, into software development, um, I worked as a CIO um, in a construction company. That was a very interesting journey. And um, after that, I went into the mobile industry and uh, I was director of mobile solutions, so-called machine to machine in 2004. And some people sometimes looked at me and said like, how is that possible that machines are talking to each other by themselves? And um, if we uh, look at today's IoT world and what the internet is bringing, um, I see the smiles in all of you. It's kind of yeah, uh, that's kind of a normal thing that everything is connected. So, um, yeah, I thought like the topic of today on artificial intelligence is very interesting um, in the context of Internet of Things because um, already in 2004 I thought like it's pretty boring if a machine talks to a machine through uh, text message technology and can just receive um, data and then um, work on it. So I wanted to ask to you, if I ask you what artificial intelligence means, what would you reply to me? Thank you. Decision making. What else? Learning. Thank you. So, uh, knowledge engineering and representation. Thank you. Any other quote? Individual actions performed without any human interference. Thank you. So I guess we have um, pretty interesting quotes and um, I will take up on that ones or on those ones um, at the end. So just to be that on the same page for everyone, um, I know it's kind of uh, not necessary, but I just want to be on the same page. Um, I just put definitions out here what IoT really means. Uh, things that are connected to the internet and the exchange of data. And I took that term a little bit further and I said, um, for me, Internet of Things is much more interesting if it gets to the internet of everything. Why everything? Because I include people, process, data, and the things um, in it. Uh, and that's why it makes it interesting um, with artificial intelligence when we are coming to the uh, point of people. As you said, artificial intelligence, um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, automated processes, emotional intelligence, knowledge that is transferable, but very important, and one of the speakers tonight, I think, is going to talk about it, what makes us different to artificial intelligence is creativity. So don't be afraid, robots will take over your world, or all your actions of today, but human beings are creative. So that's why they need us and we need to create them. They're just taking boring, mundane tasks of us. If you look at the Internet of Things, I took a um, graphic here from uh, Gartner actually, and that's all the fields that we know of today what Internet of Things can react. 
But um, as I said before, I'd like to talk about the Internet of Everything first to give you a base why um, artificial intelligence can be built onto um, Internet of Things. If um, there is a plain um, sending data, what is already today, like um, if you look up um, the website of Boeing or Airbus, you know there is tons of megabytes of data and terabytes of data that will be sent to the tower and to any um, server of this airline about the flight data already today. That is kind of, for me, um, a one-way communication. We had that for a long time, but this is not really what it makes sense. Um, it gets interesting when I talk about um, an example uh, Hyperloop. Has anybody heard of Hyperloop already? Please raise your hands. Yeah, some of you. So, famous Elon Musk. Uh, he built a company uh, and he said he wants to make the travel not fast, but efficient. What does that mean? You have even material that they have um, invented that is coming from, and they have a, called it vibranium, and this is a material that they named after Captain America, and the material is actually sending data whether you're, it's hot or it gets a little bit, um, how to say, in a difficult position. And uh, as you can imagine, if you start or think of things that are giving you data, you're going to have an amount of data that we human cannot overlook anymore because it's just too much. We have for everything and anything, we have dashboards. You know Fitbit, you know all um, e-health kits on the Apples and on the Google phones. They are sending data and then you have a lot of dashboards, but this is not artificial intelligence to me or basically it exists in our um, daily lives. So if I go deeper into some examples that I put together and I'd like to show you a video um, what really artificial intelligence is. If you look at all these names till I would say in between Watson and the grid Everything is um, based on Internet of Things basics without artificial intelligence. I don't know if you heard about Drive now. In Vienna, it's quite common. Um, I have since two years no car. I can't afford it as an entrepreneur or as a startup. So I decided to go Drive now. And why? Thank you because I actually can book a car whenever I like. You say like, okay, I have a car at home and I can take whenever I want to take the car. But since today, actually I got an email from Drive Now, I can even um, tell while I'm booking where I'm going. Why this makes me uh, feel happy? Because I don't have to turn the navigation system on. And I'm a Swiss citizen, so I'm not so common with the Vienna surroundings. I always need a navigation system. So I can really just put in my uh, address in the smartphone and it will be transferred directly to the car. And these are things that um, makes me feel okay, this is great. And I tell you another story. Um, it was, uh, it happened that I went into the car and I parked it by mistake outside of the zone. The first time ever I used the car. And um, it popped up on the navigation system that said like, the car is not in the Geschäftsgebiet anymore, so you need to pay um, money for parking. And I was like, what? Why should I pay? And they said like, and then you can just press a button and then a man or a woman of a call center calls you back on the, f on the car and tells you, well, you should park the car, otherwise you pay 19 cents. But it's still no artificial intelligence, it's a call center. And this is why I'm saying like, they would have a lot of potential to 
implement artificial intelligence because these are simple questions and answers that you can handle in a process. What, um, going to the grid for instance, I don't know if you have ever heard about it, it's the first um, website creator that uses artificial intelligence. So the only thing what you do, it's still in beta, um, I've put my website, the actual one is not the grid yet based on this technology because the, it's still in beta and it doesn't work. The only thing what you do is sending photos and texts and the rest is magically done. You just choose a style and there are different styles and you say like, I'm more an artist, I'm more an engineer, I'm more a consultant and then he creates the site um, as itself. And it's really... Um, working on the um, AWS, the Amazon Web Services or Cloud Services, but there is an artificial intelligence behind creating a website. It's the first touch or thing that I've, I saw that um, touches a little bit the, uh, I would say, the aspect of creativity that I'm a little bit of afraid of because I thought like this is my selling point as a consultant being creative but for designers in future um, they focus on different things. Um, Apple, I know everybody knows um, Apple uh, maybe but today when you call Apple support it's actually a robot that answers you. Whether you're chatting, whether you're on the phone, the first uh, touch point with the customer is artificial intelligence. They have scratched um, the first part, so try it out the next time if you own an Apple. And um, one thing that was amazing that I uh, didn't, uh, or I really didn't uh, feel that there was any robo is Amy. She's called Amy Ingram. Um, I'm developing software for for maps, indoor maps, and this um, CEO, um, uh, I needed to schedule a call with him. So I wrote an email to him and then Amy Ingram responded to me and said like, really, in very good English, mm, when would you schedule calls? And I didn't know that this was an artificial intelligence or a robot behind. So she asked me questions backward and forward and I gave her dates and everything. And when I met the CEO over a virtual meeting, he said, actually, I said like, oh, um, look, and can, can I talk to Amy for, for an appointment? And he said like, by the way, I just wanted to let you know it's a robot. It's, it's not a real person. My assistant is a robot. And um, he wasn't able to put me on the beta list yet, but um, it's really fascinating that all scheduling and it's, uh, you won't feel it when you write to her. It's done by her. She just connects to um, your calendar and then you have an assistant for scheduling. And the, uh, she responds only by email. That's why I want to show you an example of Amelia. Um, Amelia, I came across um, for the following situation. I was um, at a consulting group in uh, Switzerland, a bigger one. I don't want to name it because of due to marketing. Uh, they said like they had um, a problem with um, organizing their IT. They have a lot of consultants running around, 150 people. And I said like, Amelia would take the task. And he said like, what? Um, his issue was that he has 55 people and has to run an organization for a thousand and he has to develop software and so on. He didn't know where to put the resources and uh, the most resources of these 55 people are uh, help desks persons. Just calling um, up if somebody has a problem with the laptop. And Amelia could take over. Unfortunately, I haven't um, gotten into the step that we have a proof of concept because it was one and a half years ago still in early stage. Um, but now Amelia has um, something more than Amy can do is 
is what I mentioned in the beginning, what for me as a definition is important. She has emotional intelligence. That means if I am angry and tell her, Amelia, I'm not happy with you, then she starts to smile and talks in a nicer voice to you because she tries to calm you down. What she, but the only thing what she can't do is basically the creativity. So she can't draw, she can't design, she can just follow processes. And that's one or the main thing I want before I show the, uh, the example of the video of Amelia, what artificial intelligence can do. Think that artificial intelligence doesn't work without the body. What does mean the body? The body is all automated processes. Processes really deep down that is structured. And with every customer I want to implement artificial intelligent, intelligence. So um, until today, I stumbled over um, the thing or the little important thing that they had no processes designed nor documented on paper. So if you have no structure or no process, you can't implement artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence cannot work without telling you exactly what you have to do. It cannot learn without um, structure and processes. So artificial intelligence in the IoT space, wherever you are going to use it for a call center or for a finance broker or anything that Amelia is working today, they have very strict processes. And when she can't follow a process, when she doesn't know what to do, she can ask a human being for assistance. And if the human being is talking, she can learn from it. So that's what artificial intelligence can do today. Why did you exclude Watson from AI? Wouldn't you say that uh, semantic networks are part of AI? <laughs> Why did I um, exclude Watson from um, the artificial intelligence is because for me artificial intelligence and some of you mentioned it is interaction of a human being and the interaction of a human being is emotional intelligence or emotional and that's why a Watson can help of course in certain areas but um, I guess in my knowledge, there are artificial intelligence that are much further than Watson. But that's already implemented. Emotional intelligence is implemented in Watson. Okay. Oh. I do not have that. So you would also exclude a neural network and expert systems? <laughs> it hasn't uh, emotional intelligence. Um, I'm aware of that, but um, for instance, um, Amelia has that implemented, so it's part of artificial intelligence, certainly. It's just examples that I know better. Watson, I just know it in the education space where you can help teachers to individually uh, teach kids <laughs> mathem mathematics or anything that's what they're testing in different fields because i believe that today's um education system is not m up to date anymore it's uh, it's just made for robots that we don't need in future um and but people have to be differently educated and that's why they took watson into place that we can do it individually um uh, scientist that I looked at the video today, he even said it's more, more important to teach the kids music, creativity like drawing and all of that, and playing outside. And he said like an example would be instead of listening to a biological lesson or mathematics, you should go out and ask the question, why is this tree so big? Why is actually this tree 
am living because the water has to be pumped 10 meters up. And there you can learn much more about physics, water and anything than the education of today and just bring them in into a room. So my time is up here. So um, more questions? If not, then I still have a minute of the video that I can show. Well, first show the... Just show the video and then uh, we'll ask the, the questions, I think. I will just show you the beginning because it's too long, but it gives you kind of a, a, a look and feel. Yeah, please. I guess you need to turn up the sound. The best thing about having a room full of engineers, well, it always does not work. Uh, I remember one situation uh, when I was a very young uh, project manager. Um, it was the first meeting with uh, one of the board members of a really big German bank and uh, we were delivering our presentation from the laptop and at the time the, the laptop's battery power was roughly one and a half hours and I forgot to bring my um, power cord and uh, the whole meeting was scheduled for two hours and you know or you knew that uh, the power only lasts for one and a half hours. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, so I hope um, good chance to uh, to read this comment here. Yeah, just we, yeah. we just put the microphone towards the speaker and that should work. <laughs> <laughs> There was one uh, really great uh, commercial in the New York Times, I think. Um, there was um, something like uh, the U United States uh, NASA paid one million to write in zero gravity, and then you, say, you saw this, this really deluxe luxury version of a bullpen, and then you saw the Russian solution. It was just a normal pencil. It was great. Okay. Let's try it like that, okay? Okay. Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Amelia, IPSoft's cognitive agent. Just like a human, Amelia can understand you, learn from every interaction, and use her knowledge to diagnose and solve problems independently. Unlike a human, Amelia works at machine speed and can scale dynamically to match demand. Hi Amelia. Anything happening? Can you help me get homeowner's insurance? What would be your address? So that you can see how Amelia is making decisions on what to do, let's switch interfaces so you can see behind the scenes at what is happening in Amelia's mind. Hi, Ben Case. Once again, can you help me get homeowner's insurance, Amelia? 
What is your address? Here you can see a very simple business process that has been mapped out in that. To the volume down. And this is exactly where you start to struggle for artificial intelligence if you go into a customer and he wants to implement it. Because these processes are not noted down. They know it in the head, but nobody has it, or most of them that I at least met was not. So be aware, if you start an artificial pro um, intelligence project with anyone, make sure that you start with the basis. It's not enough that a thing is talking to you or is connected to the internet, that you have data. You need to work on the body, as we call it. The head, everybody has. You can have it out of the cloud. Amelia, you can purchase out of the cloud. Watson, you can get it. But you need processes to, to define how artificial intelligence is reacting. It's like human beings, we have at least most of the time behaviors or norms in certain culture. But this is what Amelia doesn't have. She needs that, she can learn, she can even learn from human beings. And what the great thing is, whether you type it in, in words, whether you speak to her over the phone, she recognizes and she can learn out of it and she will build all these structures herself. And this is what um, makes me feel that artificial intelligence is great because she can do all of the mundane tasks that um, most of the time creativity is not as important. And that's why I believe there is a big space for artificial intelligence in the IoT space.